Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience and our broadcast. We thank you so much for tuning in today. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here, but we do believe that there will be something that'll be shared. That'll be a blessing to your life. So we just want to say welcome on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself. We just want to say welcome to everyone, to all of our first timers that may be logging in today. We just want to thank you guys for showing up. Uh, we want to just acknowledge you if that's you and this is your first time viewing this broadcast. We want you to just let us know um, that you're viewing today. Listen, tell us where you're um, logging in from, whatever state, whatever country that you're in. But listen, we have people watching all over the world, and we just thank God for you showing up here today. And listen, all of my Spirit of Fire family, we just thank God for you guys. We love you. We appreciate you so much. And uh, we just praying for you. Pastor Raquel and myself, we, listen, we love you guys. We love you so much. We appreciate you so much. And we are constantly praying for you and praying over your well-being. Listen, I want to get ready to jump into this thing. We have been dealing with the Lord of the breakthrough. And God has been really stirring up things in my heart and my life. And I believe that something is going to be said today. I believe that Holy Spirit has a lot to share with us, that the word of God has a lot to share. Yes, I personally have a lot to share, but I believe this is going to be transformative. That transformation, we just want to give information, but I want transformation. I want a revelation to take place so that transformation can take place so that manifestation can take place. Well, one of the things as I was praying, um, and just going over my notes and getting ready for this. I just see the heart of God. He wants to remove anything that's withholding things from manifesting in our lives. And this is just a time of great, if I can use the, this one word as a reckoning. In other words, finally dealing with areas that have been holding you captive, that have been containing you in your life in any way, shape, fashion, or form. I'm expecting the power of God to begin to manifest and begin to now cause freedom to take place, deliverance to take place, wholeness to take place. Even as we're preaching the word, I think it's always important to be transparent. I think it's important for us as ministers of the gospel to take this thing extremely seriously and to understand that, hey, God is working in us just like he's working in you and that we're going from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And one of the things that I always like to tell people is, listen, God's word can transform and can change your life for the better. If you take this word, meditate on it, put it on your mouth, speak it, you will begin to see the deliverance and the transformation that you need. This word is powerful. And so I feel like I'm just supposed to just, I'm going to do a little recap, but I just believe the spirit of God just wants me to just sow this word into you this morning. I have some scriptures I want to share with you. I want to stay in alignment and kind of finish up on some things that I dealt with last week and dealing with I'm coming out even in this series of dealing with the God of the breakthrough. And we talked about even with the spirit of containment, three ways that Satan tries to contain you. And so as we begin to talk, before we go into that, let's go ahead and just have a quick word of prayer. Father, we just thank you. For this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I do thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords, think to my mind. Yeah, minister supernaturally. Speak forth your oracles. Yeah, we do approach this holy written word reverently. I pray that every ear is anointed to hear. Every heart is open and ready to receive the word of God, which is able to save our soul. We give you praise in advance for it. We cover the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. And so, Father, we give you praise in advance for it right now. We thank you for growth, expansion, increase, that you're increasing our territory, expanding our borders. And we give you praise and glory for it now. Minister to the lives of people. Bring confidence, bring strength. Let the spirit of faith and the spirit of fire manifest. Even the gift of faith to cause people to be able to believe for things supernaturally that, it, that they just couldn't before. 
But Father, we thank you that this word is being sown to transform our lives for the better. We give you praise. We give you glory in advance for it now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody say amen and amen. Praise God. Well, glory to God. You can go ahead and turn. Hallelujah. Now, we want to talk to you about coming out. This transformation and this change. Now, one of the things in, in recapping from last week, I just want to share this with you. We talked about three things that Satan uses to try to contain you in your life. One of the things, number one, was ignorance or lack of knowledge or education or awareness. Number two was distraction. Distraction being mental confusion. It means to be perplexed. It's like Satan is drawing your attention away from something else. It moves you away from your focus. So whenever he tries to contain you, he tries to get you off focus. He tries to get you off onto something that really you don't have any business thinking about. And so what he's trying to do is he's trying to get you to the place where you're not locked in to the, to the path that God has for you. And if he gets you off focus, he gets you off course. And if he gets you off course, then you won't experience the manifestations of God's glory in your life, like the level that you should be experiencing it. God has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of us. And in that path, he says in the book of Ephesians, is the good life. And so we all desire to live a good life. We desire to live a life that's number one, pleasing unto God. Number two, that's happy, that's fulfilling to us. And so we want to make sure that we begin to function in, the, in, the, in God's word and his principles and his laws so that we can experience this good life. All right. And so now the third thing was deception that Satan brings. Now, deception is, man, this is a this is an interesting thing. Um, it's one thing for somebody else to deceive you is another thing for self-deception to take place where you don't see you because of how you think about you. You think of yourself one way, but in reality, you're another way. And so one of the things to, to deceive is to give a false impression. It's to cause to accept as true or valid what is false or invalid. It also means to ensnare. So when you're in deception, you're ensnared, you're trapped. And so God wants to take the scales off of our eyes to see areas that maybe we've been deceived in in our own lives that Sometimes even the Bible says, think yourself. He says, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. Now, you're supposed to think of yourself high. You're supposed to have a high level of self-esteem and confidence, knowing who you are in Christ. But he says, now, don't get to the place of arrogance. Don't get to the place where now even that's what happened with Satan. He became haughty. He, and then what happens is you become filled with pride. And when you become filled with pride, you can't see you. It, it, and it's all about you. And so he's saying now, don't let Satan deceive you. And so now in the book of Galatians, I want to get started here. And I want to kind of kind of move on from here. Then in the book of Galatians six and seven, it says, be not deceived. It says, God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So now he says, OK, God is not mocked or made a fool of whatever you sow, you're going to reap. That's a law. That's a spiritual law that takes place. So now sometimes people think that, see, this is where the deception comes in. You're expecting one harvest, but you've been sowing a different seed. So, it, it, see, it'll be deceptive. It, I'll be deceived if I expect to receive oranges if I've been sowing apples, apple seed, or expecting grapes when I've been sowing watermelon seed. You, you would look at a farmer and think something was wrong with them if you were asking, okay, what harvest are you expecting? I'm expecting a, a, a watermelon crop. Well, what seed did you sow? I sowed some, um, some apple seeds, some orange seeds. Like, wait a minute. Well, how come you didn't sow the type of seed that you're looking to produce? He says, don't, pre he says, don't be deceived. He says, when you begin to sow things, not just in your life, but even in other people's lives. He says, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. See, in order to have friends, the Bible even says you need to show yourself friendly. You need to be a friend. You need to be that individual. And a lot of times we look to reap in areas that we have not sown in. So God is saying, don't be mocked. See, that's the thing. See, for you to experience or expect a supernatural financial harvest, but you never give of your finances or resources. He says, don't listen. I'm not mocked. Don't be deceived. 
Don't expect harvest where there has been no seed sown. And we got to be mindful of that. Now watch this also in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11 in the New Living Translation. He says, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? He says, don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or are abusive or cheat people. He says, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. He says, some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. So, okay, let, let's, let's, let's deal with this now because this is going to be the, 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 the crux of what I'm going to kind of deal with today, that there are things that will come in and creep into our lives that we allow or we set the platform of that will cause us to walk in a level of containment because of how we're living our lives. And so God is saying this. He says, OK, now you got to understand this. If you practice these things, you won't inherit the kingdom of God. So we got to define this. When we talk about the kingdom of God, you know, sometimes in research and you see many different people have many different understandings and ideas about things about the kingdom of God. But when you understand the kingdom of God, even as I begin to go back to the book of uh, Matthew 6, 33, when it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. The Amplified Version says it like this, his way of doing and being right. The kingdom of God, his way of doing. Then it talks about and his righteousness, his way of being. And I begin to look at that. He says, now, if you focus on these, these two things, the actions of the word of God, but also the identity that you follow in him, that you find in him as the righteousness of God and understanding that as the righteousness of God, now these two things come together. He says for all these things and he named a bunch of stuff, what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, what, how you're going to be clothed, all of this stuff. He says the Gentiles seek after these things, but he says, seek ye first my kingdom and and his righteousness his kingdom and his righteousness so his kingdom he says his way of doing righteousness the way of being that means your identity so sometimes watch this and these two are together so now listen to what i'm saying he says you can start doing the things of the kingdom but if you don't function in the being your identity of who you are it can now mess up the manifestation of this stuff OK, let's let's OK. Let me let me let me break it down a little more because he just finished saying it here in first Corinthians. When you are a person who's a cheat, he says person who's greedy, a thief. He talks about practicing homosexuality, sexual sins, worshiping idols. These things he's saying this. OK, y'all, as the righteousness of God, we need to understand who we are, because then he says in verse 11, some of you once once were like that, but you were cleansed. You were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God. When you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have been made right with God and you have been made now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so now when I function in my identity and I begin to renew my mind to who I am in Christ, now I put off those things that now that Paul was talking about here. I put off these things because as a Christian, as a believer on Jesus, I should not be functioning in these things that he's talking about here because he says you won't inherit the kingdom of God, his way of doing. So see, sin can't unravel your righteousness because you're made right with God, not through your works, but through what Christ did for us. This is why we celebrated Resurrection Sunday last week. And we understand that, wait a minute, we've been raised in the newness of life. And we understand that we've been made righteous before God. And so we got to understand who we are in Christ. And when I understand my identity in Christ, now it begins to seep out into areas of my life. I begin to function as a believer. I begin to function as the righteousness of God. I have to now reject and resist the things that righteous people don't do any longer because that was the old me. The old me was flesh ruled. The old me submitted to this stuff. The old me would be easy to lie and to cheat. The old me would get caught up in this stuff. The old me would love and to enjoy, indulge in this stuff. 
But now it's the righteousness of God. I got to say now, because I'm righteous, I begin to do right things. I don't do right things to become righteous. But because I'm righteous, I do these things. Now, this is important. Because if we don't deal with these things, that we'll try to think and we'll try to figure out, God, why isn't this working? Why hasn't this happened? And he says now, he says, you've done all of this stuff. He says, don't omit the way to your matters. He says, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Consider how you function. Consider what you do. Consider. So many times we just talk about, okay, now I already know messages like this we don't always like because it begins to attack how we live how we live. But God is saying, you cannot get around this. He says, now watch this. He says, verse 11 again, in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. You were made holy. You have been made holy. You have been made holy. <clears throat> you have been made holy before God. God says, be ye holy for I am holy. I need you to say this. I need you even, whether it's typing it out, saying it to yourself, say, I am holy. Because God made me holy. Now, th this is important. We got to understand this. We got to get back to this. Because as we know the truth, it says in John um, 8 and 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. When you know who you are in Christ, freedom begins to take place. And you try to say, how can I stop doing this stuff that I've been trapped in doing for so long? Become alive to who you are. There's a scripture that says, awaken unto righteousness and sin not. When you awaken to your identity, then all of a sudden now you are strengthened to reject and to resist the thing that's being that you're being tempted to do. Whatever it is, God is saying now, if you become more aware of your righteousness, if you become more aware of your identity, if you become more aware of who you are, when you don't forget who you are, then it's easier to walk this thing out. Some people say, well, it's hard. And I understand sometimes it's hard because when it gets hard when we try to do it in and of ourselves. But now when we renew our minds with the word, when we stay around the word, when we hear it, when we read it, when we understand it, but we, when we also declare and decree that we are righteous before God, now all of a sudden we are strengthened and empowered to reject and to resist anything that comes our way. It's when we start now dwelling on what it is that we want to do, what the flesh wants to do. See, as you meditate on that thing, then all of a sudden it begins to strengthen in you to flow in that area. But God is saying, if you begin to renew your mind and you begin to think on these things, you will begin to see, you will begin to walk holy. You will begin to walk as the righteousness of God as you commit yourself to this. Now, I want to make this statement. The righteousness of God frees us from sin. The righteousness of God. You've already been made righteous. You've already been made free. And whom the Son hath set free is free indeed. You have already been made free. You have already been made free. You have already been made free. I'm going to say it again. You have already been made free. I know I'm preaching to somebody. You have already been made free. Now, what do we do? What do we do from here? I want to go to the book of Romans chapter 7. Now, there, now this is going to be just the meat of this thing today. Right here is what I'm getting ready to get into now. The book of Romans chapter 7. And we're going to read verses 14 through 25 in the New Living Translation. I know it might be a lot of scriptures that you're used to, to reading and sharing. But this is important. This is why we have to... Get in this thing. We have to study to show ourselves approved. You know, amen. I'm just going to teach the word. I'm going to teach the word. <laughs> Watch this. It says, so, so the trouble is not with the law. Starting in verse 14. It's the New Living Translation. So the trouble is not with the law. For it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me. For I, for I am all too human, a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. But if I know that what I'm doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. 
So now watch this. The law only showed the sinfulness of men. The law said, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. It let us know what was wrong. So that's why he's saying here, but watch this. It could not do anything about the nature that caused us to do wrong. It just showed us what was wrong. He says, so I am not the one um, doing the wrong. It is the sin. It is sin living in me that does it. And I know that nothing good lives in me. That is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. He says, well, but I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. Verse 20. But if I do what I don't want to do, I'm not really the one um, doing wrong. It is the sin living in me that does it. Man, this is this is something here. He says, I have discovered this principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. He says, oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Wait a minute. Let's just stop here. Do you just realize this doesn't look like a good diagnosis here? He's saying, Paul is saying here, okay, when I want to do right, I don't do it. Now, I want to do it. I want to do the right thing. But this thing that's in me, this sin that's in me, it keeps holding me back from doing the right thing. It almost looks like, man, this is, seems like a hopeless situation that I want to break free, but I can't. He says, but as you keep reading, the answer begins to show up in verse 30, 25. He says, wait a minute. Thank God the answer to this. The answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you see how it is in my mind. I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I'm a slave to sin. So he keeps saying this, but he says the answer is in Christ. Now we're going to go in chapter eight, which really, you know, the Bible is written in chapters and verses really for our learning, our ability to read it. But it was really one continuous letter. So after he sets this whole thing up, to make it seem like it's impossible for us to live this way. He says, there is an answer to this dilemma. There's a way out. There's a way you can stop doing what you've been doing. And you've been crying out to God, God, I hate this thing. I don't want to keep doing it. And then all of a sudden now he says, the answer shows up. Now watch this. He says, the answer is in Jesus Christ. And now we go into chapter eight, chapter eight. Now watch this. So now, so now, so now. So now, after he gives the answer, he says, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. So now because you're in Christ, that life giving spirit abides in you. It's delivered you. It sets you free from the power, the authority that that sin nature had over you. The, now as the righteousness of God, that power is working in you to deliver and to set you free where sin no longer has a hold on you, a grip on you, authority over you to make you do something you don't want to do. Why? Because God's nature abides in you now and you've been made the righteousness of God. So you have authority and power to do what's right. And that sin has no dominion over you. Now, come on. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he says, watch this. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Verse two again. And because you belong to him, the power of the life given spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. So God did what the law could not do. The law was made for sinful man to say, hey, this is what's wrong. You get, listen, it showed us our sin, but couldn't do anything about it. Jesus came to fulfill every requirement of the law so that now we in him through what he did, we could reap the benefits of being made righteous, being empowered to reject and to resist 
or to follow through with these things. He said in the Old Testament, he says, I'm going to take a heart of stone out of you and put a heart of flesh and I'm going to write my laws in your heart. I'm going to put my spirit within you to cause you to be able to walk in my statutes, to cause you to be able to walk in my ways. And so now when God's life giving spirit abides in you, you have the nature of God. You have the power of God. You have the ability to, of God to walk in a sinful world and environment and not be entangled in any bondage or addiction or bad behavior that now the world is being overridden with. You as a blood washed, blood bought believer on the Lord Jesus Christ, sin has no power over you any longer. So you don't have to be afraid of something coming on you and making you do something or you being afraid to fall back into something that God has brought you out of when you have been delivered and made free you are free indeed glory to God okay why am I talking about this because these are things that contain people people struggle privately people are struggling privately and they're trying to figure a way out of it and I'm here to let you know, and God is saying that, listen, if you are believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you have already been made free and you have authority over that thing to reject it and to resist it in the name of Jesus, in the authority of Jesus. See, it's because you are a Christian now. You are born again believer. You have power over anything that comes against you. You have power over it. You have power and authority over it. Any negative thought that comes against your mind, you have power and authority over it. Anything that tries to come your way, you have power and authority over it. Yeah, come on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, come on. Now, what, what verse I leave off at? Is it verse? Oh, we're, we're in chapter 8. Um, yeah, verse 3. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He says the law was it was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us. So watch this. <laughs> and God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. So Jesus dying for us became the sin sacrifice so that sin could no longer have control over us. That's what the Bible says. Sin has no control over me. Sin has no dominion over me. That needs to be part of your daily confession. Sin has no dominion over me. It has no control over me. I dominate it. It does not dominate me. I walk in the life of God. I have the life and the nature of God abiding in me to reject, to resist, and to override any sinful behavior that I've been walking in. Okay, come on, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Yep, yep, let's keep going. Let's keep going. So you have the ability. Yeah, yeah, born again, tongue talking, all of that. But it's time to ex ex exercise this authority and power. Now watch this. He's a sacrifice of our sins. Verse four, he did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us. The just requirements of the law. Jesus fulfilled that. Who know, watch this, who know sinful things or who no longer follow our sinful nature, but it follow, watch this, the spirit. So watch this. We don't follow our sinful nature. Instead, we follow the Holy Spirit. We follow the spirit. We follow the spirit. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature. Now watch this. He's explaining this here. How can you be dominated by a sinful nature? How can you still walk in this bondage? For those who are dominated by the sinful nature, think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit, think about things that please the spirit. So watch this. He's saying the reason why you go back to the sinful thing is because of how you're thinking. You're thinking about the sinful thing. 
And so when you think about the simple things on a regular basis, it begins to develop this appetite that draws you to do that thing. And so he says this. So now watch this. The controlling factor is the mind now. This central system, this system right now, that soul area, the mind, the will, the intellect, the emotions, the imagination. He says this, when you dwell on sin, it develops an appetite to do the sin. He says, but if you dwell on the Holy Spirit and the things of the Spirit, it will cause you to be led to do those things. Paul said it in Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He says transformation will take place when our minds are renewed to think in alignment with the will of God and the word of God. And I know in this day and time, see, this is why, man, I mean, you talking about a time like never before where every wicked, perverted, vile thing is being released in the earth through the area of media, social media, arts, entertainment. And so all of these images, you can't look at a commercial without some type of sensual, sexual thing that's being even subliminally put in it or lifestyles that now oppose God's word because it's setting the environment and the atmosphere for this type of living to take place, to say it's okay to do it, and to now begin to dull senses, to dull people's mindset, to say, okay, it's okay because it's the social norm. It's the social values. He says, don't be conformed to this world. Listen, this word is still true. We as Christians are not supposed to have the mindset that the world, the system that's been ruled by Satan, that watch this, because of Adam's sin, it was turned over to Satan to be the God, little g, of this world system. And so now he still has a level of authority in this earth. But we as believers have power and ability over all his ability, authority over all his ability. And the Bible says nothing shall by any means hurt us. And so a lot of times preaching like this becomes quote unquote antiquated because now people are thinking, okay, we don't want to talk about sin. We don't want to deal with it because the more you preach about sin, you strengthen. Wait a minute. We understand that, that we talk about who we are and see where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. But Paul also tells us, okay, if you do these things, it will unravel your life. Sin won't unravel your righteousness, but it will unravel your life. See, to live, listen, okay, so even though a person can be born again, a guy can be born again, but sneaking around on his wife, don't you know that that's going to mess up some stuff? God loves you. You're still born again, but it'll wreck your marriage. It'll wreck your family. Now your children are dealing with things. Your wife is dealing with stuff. Now you bringing other people involved and it just, listen, families have been destroyed because people have allowed sinful natures to begin to rise up. And we don't, listen, we gotta be, listen, this is so important. We've been given authority to quiet this thing down and to say, okay, you have no authority over me any longer. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I've been born again, made anew. I'm alive unto God. Sin has no dominion over me. I don't even develop an appetite for that thing any longer because I'm going to feed off the word of God. I'm going to feed my spirit and deaden every sinful nature and desire that tries to come up. Listen, we still deal with things. We still deal with temptations. But well, now we got to build ourselves up to know how to handle every temptation that comes. Cast down that thought. Cast down that, that, down that imagination. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So if you feel yourself drifting, starting to think about something that you know you ain't got no business thinking about, you got to grab it quick. Uh, uh I'm not going to be controlled by that desire any longer because I know if I stay there meditating on it long enough, thinking about it long enough, it's going to well up a desire in me to go now and fulfill that desire. This is how we now stop living certain ways that now you got to recognize, wait a minute, I got authority to stop. But it starts up here. If you catch it in the thought life. See, by the time you done got into that environment, 
Th listen, God been telling you stop going over that person's house. Stop going over that man's house, that woman's house. And you know when you go over there, ain't nothing going to happen, but both of y'all going to be buck naked in the bed together. And before you know it, now you feel the condemnation the next day or right after you finish. Now you feel the condemnation and the guilt. Why? Because the nature of God still abides in you and lives in you. And now conviction kicks in, not condemnation. Satan brings condemnation, guilt, and makes you feel ashamed and makes you feel like you ain't nothing and makes you feel all this stuff. And now he's trying to destroy you. He's trying to hold you captive. And now you see this cycle that you've walked in all of your life. And now all of a sudden you say, God, I want to change this thing. I'm tired of living this way. I'm tired of falling back in the thing that I don't want to do. Now you have authority and you have victory to rise up. Glory to God. And to say no, because see, watch this. It started with a thought, whether you realize it or not, it started as a thought. You thought about it. You dwelt on it. Now, when the opportunity presented itself, it's easier for you to walk in it because you built the platform in your mind that helped well up the desire. So when the presentation came, oh, it was effortless to do it. It was effortless. And so the same way that you got into this mess is the way you get out of it. The way you get out of it, you got to flush out that old way of thinking with God's word to say, OK, OK, see, OK, let me let me let me let me let me let me stop here. Let me, let me, let me stop here for a second. You know, we use these terminologies. We use these things. OK, you got to meditate on the word. You got to flush the word out. But now the reality is a lot of people don't discipline, don't have the discipline as to what it takes to really come out of that thing because they don't set time up. They don't plan their time to spend time with God. You don't, you know, we, we will binge watch Netflix, but don't binge watch ministry that will feed us enough to flush out that thinking that because it's going to take a cleansing, a cleansing of the washing of the water of the word that cleanses your palate. Just like in the natural, when you drink water to cleanse your palate, like after you've eaten something and you feel the aftertaste. And so the same way from a sinful perspective, when you feed off stuff that feeds the flesh, that feeds that nature, then all of a sudden now God says, I want you to live another way. But then you got to change what you're feeding off of. And it takes discipline. And because I see and I know sometimes the sin is more exciting. It is. And I get that. But when you start getting into the spirit, you'll start realizing that, wait a minute, this power that already abides in me, it can override any of this stuff, anything that I've been dealing with. Come on, come on, come on. All right, come on. Let's keep going. It says, those who are dominated by the sinful nature, verse 5, think about sinful things. Those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit, think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace for the sinful nature is always hostile towards God. It never did obey God's law and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. It's not pleasing to God. And we got to be more mindful of that because a lot of times when we're in the midst of doing stuff, if we ain't think about God because we're just thinking about pleasing self. It's a self-centeredness. It's a selfishness that's attached to it. Only the thing that, just, that brings sensual pleasure, desire, it ain't got to just be sexual. It can just be allowing your emotions to rule you and to walk in anger and bitterness and jealousy and envy and strife because now you're so focused on you, then all of a sudden it, it, it builds a resentment towards other people. And God is saying, that ain't the love of God. The love has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. And so you need to develop that love. You need to grow in that love. You need to start saying, okay, I'm going to pray for the person who just spoke against me. I'm going to pray for the one who just cussed me out. I'm going to pray for the one who just stole my man. I'm going to pray for the one who did this thing. I'm going to pray for the person that my um, spouse cheated on with. I'm going to pray for the person that did this to my child. I know that's hard. I know that's hard at times. So I'm not telling you to do so. Listen, I understand when the emotions get involved and all this stuff and then Satan brings up stuff to your memory and you begin to think about how people wronged you. 
how they dogged you out, that they ain't paying the child support, that they ain't following through with stuff, and all of this bitterness, all of this resentment, all of this anger comes up just because people ain't treat you right. And now all of a sudden, now God is saying, in order to be controlled by the Holy Spirit, you got to dwell on spiritual things. You got to dwell on what he's saying to do. And because he's trying to bring you out through your head first. He is trying to get you now to be ruled and to be spirit led and to have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God form within you. Yeah, I know sometimes it's hard. I understand. I un Listen, I've been there when I preach to people right in front of them and I know they're going to say stuff about me. I done now loved on people. My wife and I, we loved on people. Even when we knew they wouldn't even admit that they dogged us out behind our back. But God says, my love still, listen, are you going to allow them to keep you from what I have for you because you holding stuff against them? It ain't even about them no more. It's about, are you going to let my love shine through you? Are you going to be willing to allow me? Are you going to let what they said stop you from receiving from me and hold you in a holding pattern for the rest of your life because you won't be willing to let it go? God is saying, you got to let that thing go now. In Jesus' name. Let it go. I know they dogged you out. Let it go. I know they did you wrong. Let it go. Because it's killing you. It ain't killing them. It's stopping your destiny from coming to pass. Let it go. You keep saying you let it go, but you keep thinking about it. You got to cast that image down. Let it go. Who Lord, who am I speaking to? I know what God told me. He said, just sow this word, sow it. Sow it. Sow it. Because it's this word that seeps into your spirit. And then all of a sudden, it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. It'll break up fallow ground. It'll break up stuff that's going on. The power of the spirit of God is speaking to you. He said, let it go. Let it go. Whenever that thought comes back up, nope. I've chosen to forgive them. Let it go. I let it go. Uh-uh. Woo, yep. Woo, you be digging deep. Yeah, we digging. The Holy Ghost digging. He digging into your soul now. Let it go. You still secretly kept that thing tucked away, but it's still there. It's still there. You still can't trust your husband. You still can't trust your wife. You still can't trust your child because of something they did. Let it go. God is restoring and rebuilding. Let it go. Love unconditionally. Let it go. Glory to God. Mm. Woo. Says we were in verse 8 or verse 9. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. Yeah. But you're controlled by the spirit. If you have the spirit of God living in you and remember that those who do not have the spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. Scripture says that even though the outward man perish, if the inward man is being renewed day by day. Whew. You've been made right with God. You've been made right with God. There's a mother. You've been made right with God. You've been made right with God. You praying for a spouse. Yeah, you praying for someone. It could be a husband, a father to your children or your child or whatever. God said, listen, I got you covered. I got you covered. I got you covered. But you got to know how to love you first. You got to understand who you are so that you can properly attract Oh, glory to God. If you don't recognize who you are, it's almost like you attract who you become. You'll attract. I don't, I don't necessarily want to use that term who you become, because really, when you're born again, you are, your identity is the righteousness of God. Whether you believe it or not. Scripture says you've been made right with God. You've been made the righteousness of God. You now have to believe that and begin to say, okay, what do righteous people do? 
And now you begin to function as the righteousness of God to say, okay, there's a certain lifestyle that I'm supposed to live that now, even though sometimes you may not have outward stimuli or outward voices or information that's telling you what's right and what's wrong. But when you truly born again, God's nature abides in you. If you stop for a second and just allow the spirit of God to talk to you, he'll share with you certain things. That's not right. That's not right. You know, that was wrong. You know, you shouldn't have been talking about that coworker. You know, you, you, that was sneaky what you did. You need to make it right. Now here comes the part. Do I obey it or do I just keep pushing it back and neglecting it? Every time you disobey a command from the Holy Spirit who lives in you, you just stopped yourself from growing. But with every act of obedience comes growth after growth after growth. And the more you do it, the more you become controlled by it. And then you'll see the fruitfulness of it. Don't do it to change the other person. You do this to change you. And when you change, your environment will have to begin to align itself with who you are becoming now or who you are. I hope you're listening to me. God is saying, I'm trying to bring you into this new season. He says, but what is boiling down, what this is boiling down to is your character has to match with the season I'm bringing you into. And now to come to this new place, you're going to have to function at a new level. Glory to God. Glory to God. See, where a hundredfold comes, the Bible says persecution comes with hundredfold. That's what Jesus said. So if you can't handle criticism now and you asking God to expand your territory, oh, you are crumble under the pressure because you're listening too much with folks saying on social media, what they're saying here, what they're saying there. And you got to know how to lock in and to be focused. To be a boss, you got to think like one. And listen, as the righteousness of God, you got to realize, wait a minute, I'm righteous. Sin has no dominion over me. I can go into any environment as the blood washed, blood bought child of God and function as a kingdom. Ooh, as a kingdom ambassador. That when I come into this atmosphere, you, you know what I'm talking about. You know, when you're going into new environments now to now take over and infiltrate, there's some wicked, crooked and perverted people out there. And you got to know how to go into that environment with the power of the almighty God and change and rearrange things. Things like the Holy Spirit start calling stuff out. You've been prophesying to folk in churches all your life. And God is saying that same anointing needs to go out into the marketplace. And now all of a sudden the power of God is manifested. Well, that wicked CEO that's been cheating on their wife and then now causing destruction with the secretary. And you come in and call that thing out and you tell them, the, the, listen, the inner workings of their heart. Then all I'm, I'm telling you, OK, here we go. I'm telling you, God is saying it's going to cause men to repent when they see the power of God in operation. OK, glory to God. I hope you're getting this. I'm believing that you are. And he says this in verse 10. I'm going to finish up here. He says, and Christ lives within you. I know, I know. See, messages like this, we just want to hear God going to turn it around in two days and you're going to see the money come in and all those things are great. You're going to say, speed it up, Lord. If I would have been again prophesying, you know, yeah, when, when stuff start hitting home, it get quiet. And I, I like those moments. That means you're thinking. God, what is it in me that you want me to correct? What is it in me that I need to, to not, that I need to deal with? What is it in me that's been holding me back? What is it in me that I've been crying out to you for change and transformation and all of this stuff and to experience this good life? What is it, God? And this is what's happening. There's a great transformation. There's a great transformation that's taking place. Now, messages like this are not to condemn but to inspire, but it is to get you to think. See, condemnation draws you away from God. 
Conviction draws you to him. Okay, Lord. Boom, that word hit. Ooh, ouch, it hit, it hurt. It, ooh, it hit that area, that sensitive area. Okay, God, that means it's there. Now help me change. Take it step by step, day by day, moment by moment. Taking God's word, taking your, your daily confessions, your daily meditation, and say, okay, I'm going to intentionally work on this area that I've been struggling with. So I'm going to now research, find scripture, Google it. Scriptures that concern pride, scriptures pertaining to anger, scripture, whatever it is that you're dealing with, find them and say, okay, the Bible says be angry, but sin not. It says be slow to speak, slow to wrath, but be quick to listen. Sometimes you get angry at, at stuff because you're too quick to react. You don't even listen. If you work on your listening skills, it might tone down half of the stuff you get mad about if you just hear it right. So if you learn how to dwell with that, then sometimes you realize you're impatient. You're too impulsive. Okay, let me slow down. Let me stop being so impulsive with things. Let me slow down first. Let me listen. Before you know it, it starts reducing the amount of times you're getting upset because you just effectively communicated. Don't be so quick to receive a negative report about somebody. Develop the character of Christ in you. I don't know about y'all. This is a good message. See, this is a character message. This is a character message. This is the foundation stuff. Sometimes we don't realize when we, we admire people who have levels of success and all these things, but sometimes we don't realize who they are that caused them to have that. The inward workings, the things behind the scenes, stuff we don't see. That's the stuff God is coming after now. Because he says, I want you to be able to handle more. And I want you to be happy and enjoy more. See, when, you, when you're a person who lies all the time, you got to keep lying to cover up the last lie that you told. That's exhausting. To try to remember the last lie you told to try to cover it up. It's like, if you just stop lying, the stress will leave. It's stuff like that, that we gotta say, man, listen, you don't have to be afraid of an investigation if you ain't done nothing wrong. See, that's why it talks about, there's a scripture that talks about um, when, when the word is preached or certain, when certain, I'm just kind of paraphrasing it. You don't have to be afraid of truth when it shows up, when you've been living it. It's when you hide stuff and then it comes and hits that area that it's an enemy to that individual because now it's hitting you in areas you gotta develop and grow in. And God is saying this, the spirit of God lives in you. He abides in you. And to consistently walk in truth will destroy walls of containment over your life. You have authority, people to now override and overtake anything that has been coming against you. And the Spirit of God is saying, what I need you to do is to declare and decree that I'm the righteousness of God, I'm a blood-washed, blood-bought child of the Most High, I reject and resist anything that's not of Him. And so now, as you begin to live your life, now, 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 let me go ahead and end with this, because I know it, it can be, messages like this can be heavy. It can be, well, I won't really feel in that today. Why? All I did was teach you the word of God concerning where your character is concerned. Well, I'm straight. Are you really? Are you really? Or did you cut me off because you didn't want to feel when that word hit something? See, I know all of the tricks. I done done that stuff try to put my mind on something else because of what the preacher was preaching was really hitting me where I was. So I would intentionally try to get my mind on something else so that it wouldn't impact me or affect me or really make me, yeah, it wouldn't bother me that the way that it was because it was, it was cutting deep. When you open yourself, your heart up to the surgeon, he can finally get stuff out of you. Say, this is it, Lord. This is time for the glory to show up. And when the glory shows up, it's going to be so wondrous in your life that you're going to be like, God, thank you too. Listen, 
I know what it's like to be bound. And I know what it's like to be free. And I'm telling you, free is so much better. So much better. God loves you. We love you. Every head bowed, every eye closed, real quick. Wherever you are, if you're here today, under the sound of my voice, and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want you to do so today. I want you to do so. Listen, it's between you and him right now. See, you have the, you have the beauty of anonymity right now. Nobody can see where you are, whatever is going on. It's you and God now. And you say this, you know what, Pastor Mike? I've never made a commitment to, Lord, to the Lord Jesus. I've never confessed with my mouth and believed in my heart. But the Bible says this, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, you can be saved. You shall be saved. For with the heart man believes on the righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. He says this, confess me today. I'll transform and change your life forever. Now I want you to pray this prayer with me really quick. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, I reject Satan and I reject the sinful nature. According to your word, I'm now born again. I have your life in me. I have your nature in me. Now say this, say, Holy Spirit, I receive you now. Come inside my heart now. Give me utterance to speak with other tongues, to pray out divine mysteries and secrets, to build myself up in the spirit, to strengthen myself spiritually, and I'll walk in transformation and change for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Welcome to the family of God, folks. Listen, listen, you're a new creation in Christ. Old things are passed away. All things are made new. God has wiped your slate clean. God has wiped your slate clean. Listen, for Christians out there that have been listening today, I'm telling you, don't beat yourself up. Don't, don't, don't. Listen, there's an answer to this. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is enough. The blood of Jesus has already cleansed you, made you free. You've been made the righteousness of God. God is just saying now, take my word, begin to obey it day by day, step by step. Grow in it. Grow in it. This is why grace is sufficient. It covers our insufficiencies. It covers those moments where we have slip ups, mess ups, failures, things that of those nature, of that nature. The blood is there to cleanse us. It's to wipe us clean, to renew us. So the blood is there. But now we want to make sure that we begin to walk in dominion in our lives where sin does not have control over us, but we have control and authority over it. That's all God is saying, because he doesn't want things to unravel your life, to mess you up, to mess up families and homes, careers, whatever it is, destinies. He says this, I love you unconditionally. And he says, thank you for receiving me. And now follow me all the days of your life. Praise God. At this time, if there's somebody also want to give an invitation, you don't have a church home and you want to connect with us and join this ministry, we want you to just send some information to us. Let us know. Shoot us a message. Um, you can shoot, shoot us a direct message. Let us know, hey, I want to get some more information. I want to find out about the, the ministry. We want to help you connect, whether as a partner or a member to this ministry. Listen, you may be part of another church or something or another work, but you say, you know what? I want to support what you guys are doing. Give me, if you could, send me some information concerning it. Listen, we want to be there for you as well. Praise God. Also, at this time, if that's you and you, um, you desire to do so, just reach out to us. And we have somebody from our staff to contact you and connect you to the right place to, to uh, obtain and maintain what you desire to receive today. Also, at this time, we want to worship our God with our financial gifts. This is a time we call opportunity for prosperity. 
where now as we give, it's giving back to us again, good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. As you release your seed into the ground, declare and decree over it. I call forth the hundredfold harvest and return off of this seed that I sow today in the name of Jesus. And so listen, folks, I'm telling you, as you do this, we are in faith with you. We're in covenant agreement with you that God would prosper you and increase you more and more. You, your children, your family, and everything you set, you set your hands to will prosper. It will flourish and it will work in Jesus name. Love you guys so much. So that information is coming up on your screen as to how to sow your financial gifts. Listen, I don't want to keep you longer than I have to. I know it can be a little longer today, but um, thank God for you for staying in there, hanging in there with me. Listen, y'all, we made it through. We made it through the message, made it through the message. I know when we deal with stuff like this, sometimes it can be intense. It can be like, okay, you know, I, I want to be reminded of what I'm doing wrong, but God wants us to be aware of these things so that now we can start saying, no, sin does have no, has no dominion over me. I'm not going to be shut down in containment any longer. I want to break, break free and break loose into all of what God has for me. And so this is important. This is so important to you. So, hey, guys, on behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, we will say we love you guys so much. We appreciate you so much. And so we pray for your success. We pray that things work out well for you. We love you unconditionally as God loves you unconditionally. But we here at Spirit of Fire are changing the culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. We want you to, listen, tune in this week for Spirit of Fire at Home on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock. And also join us back here next Sunday. And then, listen, watch the replays, share it with people. You know, the word of God that's coming forth. Go to our YouTube channel, click subscribe, but also click on the notifications button, that little bell, so that as, script, as uh, more content is being uploaded to our YouTube channel, that you're able to connect on it, to watch it, to view it. We don't want you to miss anything. So we want you to go ahead over there and to do that as well. You can follow us on our social media platforms, the Twitter, Instagram. Uh, we want to push our periscope a little bit more and start really building that up. It's like we like to call our parachurch. So we want to go ahead and start building those things up as well on those other platforms. But we just thank you so much for tuning in today. We love you guys so much. May the grace and peace of God be upon you, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. And let everything you set your hands to prosper, flourish, and work. May you rest well and walk in complete peace and wholeness in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Love you guys. See you next time. Peace.